so students today we are going to start the chapter insulation and temperature and uh, we all know that uh, we receive energy from the sun isn't it now sun radiates the energy sun is actually the hot gases spherical mass isn't it now whose surface temperature is only 6000 degree celsius so it radiates huge amount of energy now almost 2 billion parts of solar energy is radiated but from that 2 billion part earth we receive only one part of it okay now the energy which is radiated from the sun we call it as solar radiation and from that solar radiation the one part which we receive we call it is as insulation one part so H. J. Critchfield has defined that radiate energy from the sun that strikes the earth's surface is known as insulation. Okay, so why the you know we receive only one part? What are the reasons behind that? The reason is very simple. One is the distance. The distance between the sun and the earth is almost 150 million kilometers. So it's pretty far away. Okay, and next is the size of the earth. Since the size of the earth is small. Okay, so definitely it will be able to observe only that amount of radiation according to its size. In case if the size was bigger, it would have received more amount of insulation. Okay, so these are the two reasons why we receive only the one part. Next topic is the heat budget. So here students, the one part of insulation which we are receiving. Okay, even that one part is more than enough for the uh, all kind of physical and biological phenomena which takes place on the earth okay now that one part is well maintained it has to be balanced okay the solar radiation which is coming towards the earth's surface it won't be retained by the earth again it is reflected back so when it is radiated back or reflected back to the space we call it as terrestrial radiation so when there is a balance maintained in between the incoming solar radiation and the outgoing terrestrial radiation okay a constant temperature more or less a constant temperature is maintained on the earth's atmosphere so that we call it as heat budget okay now let us see students how the heat budget or the balance is maintained in between the incoming and uh, outgoing solar radiation so let us consider that one part which we are receiving as 100 units or 100 percent okay now even as i said we don't receive the whole part of 100 percent also we receive only a fraction from that uh, 100 unit also so here what happens is uh, when the solar radiation is coming towards the earth's surface 27 percent of the solar radiation okay from that 100 27 is reflected back by the clouds and uh, out of again that 100 units 27 is reflected back 6% of the units or the 6 units of that solar radiation will scattered in the uh, atmosphere 2% of the solar radiation again it is reflected back to the space through because of the ice caps or the ice cover okay so all together all together 35% of the solar radiation out of 100 okay 35 percent out of 100 is reflected back okay so out of 135 is reflected back that means only 65 percent is remains now so 65 percent is remaining so out of that uh, 65 percent again the 14 percent uh, gets absorbed in the atmosphere because the different types of gases materials or the pollen grains dust particles are also water vapors are also present so it also ozone gas is also there so it absorbs the atmosphere uh, sorry it absorbs the solar radiation before it hits the earth's surface so 14 percent is again lost so here out of 65 which was remaining after the reflection the units which were remaining 14 percent gets absorbed so it is also lost so 65 minus 14 remaining 51 percent so finally 51 percent will hit the earth's surface okay and that 51 percent is responsible for all kind of physical and biological phenomena uh, which takes place on the earth's surface but again that 51 percent is not retained by the earth's surface 
okay uh, it is not retained by 51 percent is not retained by the earth again it is radiated back to the space during the night time so during the night time when it is radiated back we call it as terrestrial radiation because if the earth starts absorbing 51 percent every day then the earth will become a very very hot planet okay so in order to maintain a constant temperature on the earth's surface the heat which we receive it is radiated back so that we call it as terrestrial radiation and the terrestrial radiation uh, out of that 51 percent again okay 34 percent will be absorbed during the daytime 14 percent is absorbed and during the night time 34 percent is absorbed so 51 percent was radiated back out of which 34 percent is absorbed okay and uh, 17 percent the remaining 17 percent will finally escape in the earth's space okay or uh, finally it will escape from the earth's atmosphere okay so if you see here over here students that 100 units of solar radiation 100 percent of solar radiation which we are receiving it is well maintained in between the incoming solar radiation and the terrestrial radiation so this phenomena is known as heat budget okay now one more term is also there students if you see over here okay uh, that reflected back okay the uh, rays or the radiation which is reflected back before it hits the earth's surface that is of uh, altogether that is of 35 percent so this is also known as also called as the albedo of the earth okay albedo of the earth albedo of the earth means like uh, the um, heat which is lost okay okay students so as we have seen like uh, the earth's atmosphere okay also observes certain amount of uh, solar radiation as well as terrestrial radiation so during the daytime we have seen 14 percent of solar radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere and during the night we have seen like uh, 34 percent of solar uh, like the terrestrial radiation is absorbed so why there is a variation in between the absorption by the atmosphere is because during the daytime we the rays which we receive the solar radiation which we receive is in the form of short wave and during the night time okay the uh, heat which is radiated back from the earth's surface it is in the form of long wave so the atmosphere is a very good observer of the long wave radiation so that's the reason the more amount of heat is observed during the night compared to the day okay now again if you see students the heat budget which we have learned okay that is the average heat budget of the whole earth but if we see in the different latitudes the heat balance it differs now why it, dif it differs is because of the amount of solar radiation which we receive is also uh, different okay like for example if you see the equator receives the direct rays of the sun so here the temperature of the solar radiation is more whereas the polar area receives the indirect rays of the sun or the inclined sun rays so because of that here the heat balance is different from the equator so as we go towards the polar area the heat balance will also uh, differs okay so that we call it as latitudinal heat balance now students another topic which we are going to discuss is the factors controlling the solar radiation so there are different factors which also con uh, like controls the uh, you know the uh, solar radiation so one is your uh, area okay or we can also say the inclination of the sun rays so as we have learned just now the zero degree or the equatorial area receives the vertical sun rays so here the temperature is very high or the solar radiation which we receives are direct so the temperature will be very high whereas in the polar area since it receives the inclined rays okay or the indirect rays so as a result what is happening the temperature or the solar radiation in this area is very low okay so this is because of the shape of the earth also we can say okay in case if the earth was flat like this then the solar radiation which was received by the poles as well as the equator would have been same but since the curvature of the earth is spherical in nature so as a result it different latitudes receive different types amount of solar radiation so in that way due to the shape of the earth 
the sun rays become inclined and it controls the solar radiation also next we have is the time okay now time means like during the summers we have a longer days and shorter nights and during the winters we have a longer nights and shorter days isn't it so here more time when we are exposed towards the sun more amount of insulation we will uh, we, we will receives so the longer the time we are uh, facing towards the sun or exposing towards the sun okay we will receive more amount of solar radiation lesser the time less amount of solar radiation simple as that next we have is the transparency now the transparency of the atmosphere also plays a very important role okay in controlling the solar radiation now here for example if you see the earth's surface in case we if we have a cloud cover then the radiation which is coming towards the earth will be reflected back isn't it so a certain amount will be reflected back only a partial amount will reach the earth's surface now in case of the absence of cloud cover the whole amount of insulation or the solar radiation will reach the earth's surface so again, the transparency of the atmosphere also uh, influence the solar radiation. So next we have is the land and water also the another factor. Okay, for example, if you take a coastal area, okay, a coastal the land surface and the sea area. Now sea is transparent and the land is opaque. Isn't so same amount of insulation is received by both the areas, but being and transparent isn't over here. What happens? The solar radiation will penetrate into the great depths much deeper, isn't it? So it will the land surface, okay, uh, being an opaque, it will not allow the sun rays to penetrate. Okay, so as a result, what happens? The water will take time to heat it up. Okay, but whereas the land will quickly get heated up. So the temperature of the land and the water also differs. Uh, the insulation, same amount of insulation is uh, received. But because of its nature, the temperature or the solar radiation, again, it differ from land and the sea. Okay, so these are the few of the, uh, you know, the um, factors which affects the solar radiation with this we come to the end of this video i hope i was able to make you understand so i'll see you in the next video thank you